Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Organicopia Kitchen and the Total Organic Experience. I am Molly Bravo and you are here in my home kitchen in the Santa Cruz Mountains. I'm super excited today. We have the film crew here filming away, working really hard, and I wanted to take care of them and show my appreciation by making them a killer breakfast. In a couple hours, we're gonna have a really good friend of mine, Sam, come over, show us how to make an incredible homemade Bloody Mary with all the fixins, made from scratch, made with love. But for now, I am gonna show you how to make a French toast casserole with a maple praline topping. We're gonna finish it off with some cheesy scrambled eggs, homemade croutons, and chicken apple sausage with fresh herbs to die for. Let's get started with the French toast casserole. I have this beautiful little loaf pan right here. I'm gonna brush it with oil because the worst thing that could happen is our French toast casserole sticking. My family is from the South and this is actually a recipe that my aunt makes for me every time I go back to North Carolina. It's definitely not low fat, so if you're on a diet, you should probably avoid this recipe, but it's super good. We're gonna start with three um, very soft, delicious croissants. And we are gonna slice them in half lengthwise. And we're gonna start layering them inside of our loaf pan. So I'm layering the loaf pan with the croissant and we want them to come about three quarters up the pan. You don't want to fill up the entire pan because when you make a French toast casserole, the egg and the cream make it rise and you don't want it to overflow in your oven. I've definitely done that before and set off quite a few smoke alarms. So we have the base of our French toast casserole and now we're gonna make the custard. The custard consists of four eggs, these are farm fresh eggs from my CSA box. And you know that it's a good egg because the yolk is orange. The, oak, the yolk should not be yellow. We have four eggs that we're putting inside of our mixer. And to this, we're gonna add half a cup of heavy whipping cream. You can also use half and half if you'd like, and if you wanna keep it a little bit more low fat, you can just use regular milk or non-fat milk, but this gives it some nice body. So this is half a cup of heavy whipping cream. We are gonna do one full cup of regular milk. That was goat milk, it's my favorite. To that, we're gonna add some nutmeg. Nutmeg is a warm spice. It's used a lot in baking. So we're adding some fresh grated nutmeg to our dish. This is a really nice warm spice used all the time in baking. We're also gonna add just a touch of cinnamon. This is about a quarter teaspoon. And we need some sugar, so we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar to our dish. Bring out the sweetness of our French toast casserole. And we're gonna blend.
All right, so we have our custard mixture all blended up. And we are going to pour this over our French toast casserole. I have just poured the custard into our French toast casserole. Now what I do prefer doing, if I have a lot of time, is making this a day in advance and letting it set in the refrigerator overnight. But because my crew is hungry, I am not going to do that. Um, this is just going to rest for a couple minutes and meanwhile, I'm gonna go wash this little bowl so I can show you guys how to make the maple praline topping. Alrighty, so I just cleaned up my standing mixer. I have swapped out my whisk for a paddle attachment. We're gonna get started on the topping of this French toast casserole. So this is good, it's nice and sweet, kind of fattening, kind of decadent, kind of delicious, but let's enhance it a little bit by adding some butter. We are gonna make a maple praline topping to go on top of this. Very southern, very traditional. It's got pecans, butter, sugar. We're adding one stick of butter. This is unsalted butter because we like to control the saltiness of our dish by using unsalted. If we were to use salted butter, we would have a salty product without us being able to add in more or take it out. So we wanna use unsalted always when baking. We are going to add half a cup of pecans. These are just halved pecans. Uh, we are now going to add a little bit more of our nutmeg and cinnamon. We want that essence of warm spice to carry throughout our entire dish. This is about a quarter teaspoon. I can't help it, I just, I love the smell of that. Okay, we need to use a little bit more just for good luck. And we're gonna use just a splash of cinnamon. You could do this to taste. We're gonna add one full cup of sugar. You can also use brown sugar. That would make it taste a little bit more molasses-y, but we're just gonna use white sugar because that's what I have on hand and it doesn't really matter. We are going to blend this up until it's nice and light and fluffy. Alrighty, so this has been blending up. I just wanna give you a quick little shot of what it looks like. It's nice and blended, light, fluffy. And I'm gonna spread this on the top of my French toast casserole. My French toast casserole has now been sitting for about 15 minutes, so the croissants are nice and wet. They've soaked through completely. It's almost like a bread pudding of sorts. And we're gonna spread the topping evenly over the top. You can use your fingers for this. And it's okay if it doesn't cover all the edges. When it gets into the oven, all of that butter is just gonna kinda ooze throughout the entire casserole. All right, so this is the finished product. We are gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for 40 minutes. Meanwhile, I am gonna get started on my cheesy scrambled eggs with chicken apple sausage, croutons, and fresh herbs. Hello, I'm Chef Ernie from That Crazy Chef, and you're watching Foodie TV. Woo, baby! Are you guys ready to start this savory portion of our menu? We have some cheesy scrambled eggs that I slow cook with Dublin cheddar. I'm gonna add in some chicken apple sausage and some fresh croutons. We're gonna get started with these croutons. 
So I just happened to have tons of leftover sourdough bread from a catering event that I did last week. That's why I've been using it quite frequently because I don't want it to go to waste. I am gonna start by cubing these up into about one inch cubes. And this is gonna be perfect for croutons because this, is, this bread is pretty much on its last leg. You can see it's a little stale, but you don't need to have it go to waste. You could either turn these into breadcrumbs by toasting it in the oven and then pureeing it in a blender or you can make croutons like I'm doing. I'm gonna dress these up with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and we are gonna bake it in the oven at 350 with our French toast casserole for probably eight to 10 minutes. It's not gonna take very long because these are already pretty crunchy. And then we're gonna get started on our cheesy scrambled eggs. So here we have our croutons. We're gonna put them on a nice little sheet tray, drizzle it in a little EVOO, as Rachel Ray would say. Toss them all up nice and evenly coated. And season it lightly with salt and pepper. Alrighty, so I'm gonna pop these in the oven at 350 for about eight to 10 minutes. And they're gonna cook right alongside our French toast casserole. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to get started on the cheesy scrambled eggs. Alrighty, so we are over here at the stove. I have my burners on low and I have my nice pans preheating. I'm gonna show you guys how to make scrambled eggs my way. I'm gonna start with just a touch of olive oil. You can also use butter, but I find that butter burns faster and it's just a bunch of added calories that I don't necessarily need being already pregnant and already, already large. So I'm gonna add four of these beautiful eggs that I got from my CSA box. I cannot wait until I get my own chickens. Unfortunately, I don't have them quite yet because I haven't built my chicken coop, but when I do, I am very excited. These eggs are pasture raised. They eat bugs, they eat grass, they walk around, they do not live inside of a cage, they're not tortured souls. And when my eggs are, or when I know that the chickens are happy and healthy, I know that it's something that I want to eat. So we have four eggs in a preheated pan the secret to scrambled eggs, really good scrambled eggs, there's a bunch of different ways to make them. I prefer low and slow. And I like to scramble my eggs straight in the pan. So we are gonna scramble these up. We're gonna continually whisk. We're not gonna let them set and then we're gonna forget them because that will make your eggs rubbery and hard and it'll be more like a souffle instead of nice and creamy. I've learned that scrambled eggs, there's different ways to make them in all different countries, England, America, France. They all have different techniques, but this technique that I am using is just very low, very slow. You take it on the heat for about 30 seconds, and then you take it off the heat for about another 30 seconds, always stirring. It's definitely a labor of love. The other trick to making really good scrambled eggs, and I learned this from Gordon Ramsay. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay. He has such great tips is not to season your eggs until the very end because what it does is it breaks down the egg itself as it's cooking. 
and you end up getting something that's really runny and separated and we want to just season at the very end, which is very counterintuitive for cooking. Ordinarily, you like to season as you go, but we're gonna season at the very end for these eggs. So these are gonna take 10 to 15 minutes, stirring continuously on and off the heat. I'm gonna finish cooking these up, and then I'm gonna get started on the chicken apple sausage. They're nice and creamy. I've been cooking them on low and slow on and off the heat, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. I'm gonna lightly season these with salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna add in some really nice, sharp Dublin cheddar. This Dublin cheddar cheese that I use is all grass-fed. It's from Ireland. And this is probably one of my favorite cheeses on the planet. So I'm just using a little microplane and I'm gonna grate it directly in here. And I think I'm gonna end up using about a quarter cup for four eggs. All right, you guys, so I am just stirring up these eggs. You can see that all the cheese is getting incorporated in. And I'm turning off the heat now. These eggs are nice and creamy and light and fluffy and perfectly seasoned. The cheese is all melted in. I'm ready to get started on my chicken apple sausage. So I have this little pan that has been preheating. I'm gonna brush it lightly with a little olive oil. That sizzle tells you that your pan's nice and hot. It's ready to start adding in our chicken apple sausage and it's gonna give it a beautiful sear. I have cut these in half. I have two chicken apple sausages. I'm gonna put it cut side down. This is gonna allow the sausage to caramelize. I don't know if you guys know this, but I definitely want to be the next Martha Stewart, and any time that I can entertain and feed people, I am a very happy camper. So I've been kind of playing with this recipe. Um, it was created because I only had a few weird random ingredients in my refrigerator and I had some guests coming over one morning like out of the blue. So I just thought I would throw this all together. It was kind of like a goulash and it ended up being really good. I like chicken apple sausage because, well it's chicken and some people don't eat pork. so. This kind of feeds the masses and you don't really need to worry. I'm gonna let these sausages cook about four minutes per side. They're gonna get nice and golden brown. We're gonna cube them up, mix it into our eggs, pull out those croutons and toss it with some fresh herb. It's gonna be perfect. Alrighty, you guys, so these have been cooking four minutes per side. As you can see, they're nice and golden brown. Crunchy on the outside, perfectly cooked on the inside. I have finished my chicken apple sausage. I'm gonna turn off the heat. My eggs are complete, and I believe my croutons are ready. So let's get started assembling this dish. I think you guys are gonna to totally love it. I'm Chef Catman, and you're watching Foodie TV. Guys, look at these croutons, they are perfectly cooked. So, we are going to add our croutons and all of that oil because it's seasoned nicely with a little bit of salt and pepper. We have our chicken apple sausage that has been seared off. And I'm gonna cube this right now. Doesn't need to be perfect, just a nice rough chop. I like big chunks. I'm cooking for a bunch of guys, so I figure they're gonna not want something too dainty. We're adding everything to the scrambled eggs right now, and then we will plate everything. So this is some beautiful oregano. I picked this from my garden this morning. I've got like every herb under the sun. I totally love it. It's like very hard to justify buying dried herbs when you have all of this beautiful, fresh, 
product at your fingertips. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the leaves straight off the stems. You pull them back like this so that the stem is intact and it's the easiest way to get them off. Alrighty, so we have roughly, I don't know, three tablespoons or so of fresh oregano. Beautiful, delicate leaves. This is very aromatic and very perfumey. I'm gonna give it a nice rough chop just to kind of bruise up the leaves and release all of the essential oils. You can also use dill, parsley, basil would be delicious. Maybe you could add in some fresh cherry tomatoes in here just for some brightness and liveliness. Whatever you guys have on hand and whatever sounds good to you. Like I always say, I hate working off of a recipe. I really believe that a recipe is used as a guideline and it is not meant to be set in stone. So be experimental in the kitchen, especially if you're first starting out cooking. So I have here my scrambled eggs and I'm gonna just get a spoon, give this a nice little stir. And let's plate this sucker up. I bet these guys are super hungry. So I'm gonna plate this up. I believe my friend Sam is gonna be here any minute and he's gonna show us how to make a delicious, homemade, from scratch, made with love, Bloody Mary. How bad can that be? We have Sam here with Organicopia, our mixologist. He is going to show us how to make his homemade, made with love, Bloody Mary. So Sam, what makes this dish special? Hi Molly. Hi. Well, thanks for having me here. Thanks I for being it. here. Um, with love, it's uh, definitely you have to put love into what you're making. Absolutely. Either food or a drink or, but at the end, it's going to be taste it with love. So, I will be showing you how to make a beautiful Bloody Mary. Awesome. First thing I would like to start off, um, it's good to be, obviously. All right. So nice. is this, is this going to be like a Bloody Mary for one or how many will this tumbler serve? For right now, I will make it for one okay. uh, person, but we can make it up to two um, with one shaker. Perfect. Also, we can make it in a big jug, obviously. Um, but this is, it's very important to make one drink at a time, just to put all the ingredients as you need it, um, just perfectly for this particular club. I like that, so, yeah, you can so specialize we'll, right, and make it, exactly. you know, special for exactly. each person. So we'd we'll rather do this. So we're starting with our ice, and uh, we're gonna be getting our vodka. Usually it's about a couple of ounces. And I go one, two, three, there you go. I like that heavy pour, that's good. Um, kind of heavy, yeah, <laughs> right on <out> that. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be going with, um, always in this it goes a little bit of spiciness. So we're going with just a tiny bit of horseradish that it will be going into there. Again, this is a morning drink, so that's why it has all these special ingredients in there. Extra ingredients, I would say. I love it. A little bit of Tabasco, maybe two or three dashes. Worcestershire sauce, and that gives a little bit of the beautiful flavor that you have. Most importantly, when you have the uh, olives, olive juice. Oh, I never knew that. Olive juice. Nice, Sam. That looks so good. Lime. Few people like to have lemon, but lime has a lot of more acid to it, and I would rather use this for 
the extra flavoring. Then we do have our homemade tomato juice. Nice. Now, most important is do not shake. Stir. This is how we're gonna make it look more beautiful. Put in the glass with the juice. Have some salt to it. Just like making a margarita, right? Nice. This is Cause, fancy schmancy. Because you do want to have some uh, breakfast while you're drinking. I'm just putting a little bit of salt into it. And pour. Oh, Sam, that looks so good. Now, I wish I could drink that right now. Now, everybody wants to get some celery with it. And my favorite part, Don't forget the bacon for the morning. Nice. And of course, if it's olive at the end. Of course. Enjoy. Sam, that looks delicious. And cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Molly. That looks awesome. And of course, don't forget the bacon. Oh my gosh, I love that. Mmm, yummy. Sam, I want to thank you so much for showing us how to make this delicious and tasty drink. I cannot wait till I can have one of those. And you guys, I want to thank you for joining us here at Organicopia. We are going to get our entire meal plated up and ready to go. I'm sure the crew is starving and they can't wait to try one of these delicious treats. Thank you so much, Molly. Aw, um, thank you. Luck with Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. When we say that Mrs. A's is handmade, it is so handmade. And then we have Martha, who we call Magic Martha. She scoops it up and fills hundreds, thousands of containers. And then they get hand capped, hand sealed, hand stamped, and into the into the refrigerator. All right, you guys, so we are all finished up here. Thank you so much for joining me here at Organicopia, the total organic experience. We've made a delicious breakfast today. We have some French toast casserole that I just finished off with a little powdered sugar, fresh fruit. We have our warm maple syrup. We have cheesy scrambled eggs with croutons and chicken apple sausage, finished off with a little bit of fresh oregano and Sam's absolutely incredible homemade Bloody Mary. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you guys next time, thanks. Yeah.